All right, Mark. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, going to read verses 12 through 16. Mark 14, 12 through 16. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you there. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher says, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. His disciples went out and came into the city and found it as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. I want to say to you this morning, leave the details to God. Amen. Leave the details to God. Now I would challenge you to take our text today and place yourself in the same place with these disciples. The time of the Passover is approaching. Jesus and his disciples are ready to prepare for this meal. And the disciples present Jesus with a question. And what is their question? Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? I want to say to you, you and I need to ask God this question. Lord, what would you have me to do? Amen. Notice in this text who they are looking to. Who are they depending on to reveal to them the details? Who are they looking to for specific instruction? Note here that they are willing to do what he says. Okay. Where do you want us, Lord? In other words, they're saying, tell us what you want us to do. They are willing to do whatever he says. They're depending on him for the details. They look to Christ. They have this willing heart. And then they proceed to do exactly as he says do. I would suggest to you that all too often we are guilty of taking too much upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. How often do we attempt to make something happen ourselves? How often are you and I so busy trying to figure out all the details that we don't hear the details when he gives them to us. How often do we attempt to play God in our own lives? It's so simple. 
And yet we are masterful at making it difficult. It's so simple. And as I was preparing this message, I was reminded of the Hebrews when God with a mighty hand delivered them out of Egypt. And as they proceeded and they miraculously found themselves on the other side of the Red Sea after God's mighty display of His miraculous power, how did God begin to lead them afterwards? We read in Exodus that He led them with a cloud by day and a fire by night. He said to them, in the daytime, when this cloud moves, you move with it. If it don't move, you stay put. He said to them, in the nighttime, if the fire moves, you move with it. If the fire don't move, you stay put. God moved them when He was ready to move them. Get that. That's important. Amen. Let me say something to you this morning. God knows exactly how to get you and I where He wants us to be. Amen. I don't care how hard it is. If we listen, Amen. But when we start tinkering with all the little details ourselves, and we start trying to figure it all out ourselves, and we try to start analyzing each move of God like we win a chess game with Him, we're going to find ourselves in constant confusion and in constant conflict. How often do we take all of the details upon ourselves rather than leaving those details to God? You know, when God wanted me here at Rocky Creek Baptist Church, He arranged all the details and brought me here. Amen. I have no doubt about that. Praise God. Matter of fact, I sit in a pew up here at Town and Country Baptist Church all down and out. Wanting to believe that God had forgotten about me or either I had just missed God somewhere and totally went off track. I didn't have to figure it out for God. He already had it all figured out. But Amen. Amen. And it happened just the way it was supposed to happen. When Miss Dean and I had the little storefront church up on Waters Avenue, God started it and God ended it. God put us in a place where we knew when it was time to go. When it was time to move on. We have to allow God to handle all of those little details, folks. And I'm convinced after being the pastor here now for some 11 years, when God is ready for me to leave, He'll move me. Church is going with you. I don't like to sit around and figure out when God wants me to move. God move me. That is one of the great valuable lessons that I have learned in my years of seeking God. And I've had to learn some of it the hard way. Leave the details to God. I would say to you, 
that lives are totally wrecked every day by people who refuse to wait on God. You know I had to wait 10 years for God to bring this day into my life? And there were many times during that 10 years that I felt like doing God's job for. Because I didn't want to wait. Don't work that way though. I knew God had called me to live alone. But you see, God had to work out a lot of details in my life. Likewise, he had to work out a lot of details in her life until we were both ready. He probably had to work out a little details in Miss Linda and Mr. Bill as well before they were ready. Okay? <laughs> but unlike most folk, I don't like waiting. You ask them cashiers at the Walmart. <laughs> yeah, we all get paid. I don't like waiting. I want to say to you this morning, Natural. Natural. obey the Word of God and leave the details to Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Obey the Word of God and leave the details to Him. Now, the first thing I want you to get is this. Don't do anything until God tells you what to do. Don't do anything until God tells you what to do. Listen. God's not like a lot of people. God knows how to give good direction. And when God gives you direction, you'll know it. Because he, he speaks real clear. He'll even speak real loud if he has to. You read from Genesis to Revelation, you will discover that God is faithful to lead His people. Amen. True. Now, I don't know about you, but I have discovered something. I have a lot to contend with in just determining to obey the Word of God. That's a full-time job. That ought to be your focus. That ought to be my focus. Is obeying the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you something. This Word is very clear, folks. Mm -hmm. God has made this Word simple enough that a child can read it and understand it. But us adults, we get all confused. You know why? Because we get to reading it and we try to read out of it. We try to read into it rather than reading it and accepting it for just what it says. Exactly. <clears throat> it's a rather foolish thing to attempt to take God's place. God knows how to make things very, very clear. You say, well, preacher, what does God want me to do? I think that's a valid question for every Christian. Matter of fact, that's a question every one of us should ask. That should be the focus of our life. What is it that God wants me to do? Well, ask him, yeah. Let me break it down. That modern day, let me break it down for you. Let me break it down for you. Let me make it very, very simple. God wants you to obey His Word. Mm -hmm. It's all right here. This is what God wants of you. God wants you to obey His Word. And if you will simply do that, God will take care of all the other details. If you follow the instructions, God will make sure it all comes together. He created it. He knows how to put it together. You see, the problem is we want to be in charge. And 
And when we want to be in charge, you know what we do? We fail or we refuse to simply be still and know that He is God. Now in my years of living, I'm a, Miss Dean will tell you, I'm a very observant person. I'm always looking. You know I'm like an owl when I leave the Walmart, especially at nighttime like an owl. I got a 360 degree view. I'm looking everywhere. You better, this day and age, you better be looking. But I've discovered a couple of things in my observance of men. And one of the great difficulties that we as people have is being quiet and listening. And then we find it difficult to stay still in one place for too long. We like children with ants in a pan. You know, we're running through the pews. We're running all around the building. And we're too busy running and trying to figure it all out. We can't hear from God. God's speaking, but we're too busy doing other things to be able to hear what He's saying. And so here we see in our text this morning, the disciples asked Jesus what to do, and then guess what they did? They waited. Yeah. They said, what do you want us to do, Lord? And then they waited for His instruction. How often do we simply refuse to wait? God doesn't answer quick enough for us. How often have we missed God in our lives because we jumped the gun? How often have we missed God because we're in such a big hurry to get there? And what's the result? What's the consequence? We're tossed to and fro. Right tossed to and fro like a little ship in the storm. God knows how to speak. God knows how to clearly give you instruction when He is ready. Not when you're ready. When He's ready. Amen. God speaks when He's ready. He knows how to guide us. Our problem is waiting. Let me give you a little wisdom this morning. Another thing I've had to learn the hard way. God is in no hurry. His time yet. You see, God's got all eternity. God's in no hurry. <laughs> But you and I, in our limited capacity, we get to thinking, well, I'm going to only live 50 years or 60 years or 80 years or 90 years. i got to get it done now. No, we were talking about John the Baptist this morning. You know how long John the Baptist ministry lasted? Six months. How about that? We're the ones in a hurry, and being in a hurry gets us in trouble. Don't do anything until God has told you what to do. And when God tells you what to do, it'll be clear. Obey the Word of God and leave the details to Him. Second thing here is this. God will make it clear when He's ready for you to act. 
God will make it clear when He is ready for you to act. What you and I must do now, at this moment, right now is we must commit to the general will of God which is found right here. Amen. To listen. Amen. You say, what is God's will? Here it is right here. This is God's general will for every one of us sitting in here and it's God's general will for everybody out there. But you see, we get in a hurry and we want the fine details. We want the specific, those specific things that God has planned for our individual, unique, personal life. And we get focused on that. Therefore, we miss this. True. Our hearts must be focused on the general will of God. The written Word of God is God's will, His general will for all of us. Examples. We're to follow Christ. We're to trust Christ. We're to rely on Christ. We're to walk by faith and not by sight. We're to hate evil and love righteousness. We're to die to self and live for Him. We are to surrender our will to His will. God told the disciples specifically what to do. It's recorded right there. We just read it. He told them specifically what to do. He made Himself very clear. He gave very good instructions. You can see those details in verses 13 through 15. Now, just imagine with me for a moment if you were there on that day sitting in the disciples' place. Come. You might perhaps have some questions for the Lord. <laughs> well, Lord, what if the man with the picture doesn't show up? What should we do then? Well, Lord, what if we don't think we can trust that man with the picture when we get there? Should we go ahead and follow him? But, 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 but Lord, what if something happens along the way? You doubt, doubt, doubt. You know, what if I trip and break my leg on the way, Lord? <laughs> what if I lose my hearing or lose my sight on the way, Lord? What, what are we to do, Lord, if we get there and we think that room He shows us is just not large enough? Or what if we get there, Lord, and we just don't think the furnishings in the room are adequate? They didn't do that, did they? No. No, what did they do? They did what God told them to do. They followed the instruction. Like old Joe Kinder would say, my, my, my. Just follow the instruction. It sounds silly, doesn't it? But just how often do we do that? What if? But, but Lord, we simply refuse to follow the basic instructions that God has given us and then we figure, we wonder why we can't get it all together and why it never works out for us. You know all the women know that's the way us men are. We get something that's got to be put together and the first thing we do is throw the instructions aside. I know how to do it. I don't need the instructions. You have to go back to them though. 